I'm funny about stuff like that. Well, welcome to Sex Talk with Sharonda. And today, I want to talk about the Kevin Samuels video about um, a woman who wanted to date a guy with six figures. So, let me start off by saying the video has already been posted on my page. So, once you finish watching this live, go catch up on it. Because it is some really, really good information on there. Hold on a second. I just want to... I posted it on my page. Yeah, I want to make sure I had his name right. Okay, so let me just say this. Because I do what's called sex coaching. And when a person books me for sex coaching, a lot of times it is it's private. It's um one on one between me and them. Sometimes they have their partner. Um and a lot of times people book these sessions because they are looking for a certain level of honesty. I think so many women were put off with Kevin Samuels because what she was originally supposed to pay for he gave it to her for free on air and it was kind of humiliating but this was something that was actually supposed to be done in private so let's talk about this when you are in a certain income bracket okay you have an understanding that you have options not saying that money makes you but it, it's an understanding that I don't have to pick from a certain group of people. I don't have to pick from a certain, you know, I, in other words, I have options. A lot of people, they like to live in this false reality that they are the exception to the rule. When I'm in my group, in, the, in my latest group, I have been very vocal about how I don't like children. I have children. I love my children. But I am just the type of person that ain't running up behind no children. Meaning, I love the fact that my children are teenagers at this point. I love the point that they can move and be independent and do certain things on their own. And they're not as needy. I mothered them when it was time for me to mother them, but it's not something that I would consider at the top of my list. But because I'm a woman, I'm not supposed to say that. So when I say some shit like, I would not deal with a man with children, people say, well, how can you say that and you have children? Because I understand I have options. When you're dealing with people in certain income brackets, they understand that they have options and they don't have to settle. And when I make comments that I'm not about to deal with nobody and they ex-wives and baby mamas and all of that, like I'm not about to bring that level of bullshit into my life because regardless of how great the relationship may be, regardless of what it is and ain't, I don't care because I don't want to know because I'm not even much about to bring that level of bullshit to my life because I just don't want to be bothered with it because I know I don't have to. When you are out here and you are pursuing a certain type of man, in this video, this woman, she earned six figures. She had a child. She had a baby daddy. And she absolutely had nothing else to bring to the table other than her money. But she was looking for a man that had money. When you dealing with men that got money, they don't give a damn about the money that you got. They don't care about that. First of all, let me just say this here. When you are dating and you trying to meet men in a certain income bracket, you ain't going to meet them if you ain't hanging in the places that they hang at. You can't expect to meet a man of a certain caliber and I love Bella Noche to death, but you ain't about to meet him in Bella Noche because he ain't going there. I'm just being honest with you. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta go to some other places where he hang out at. You gotta go to a fucking church here. You gotta go to a top golf. You you gotta go to the uh to the the Hayride scandal. Some of that just went over some of y'all heads. 
And that shit right here in Baton Rouge. Men like that don't hang out at the club. You got to go to a bar. What's the difference between a club and a bar, Sharonda? It's a big difference between a club and a bar. At the club, you got the DJ. You got the music playing. You got the people on the dance floor. It's a party. That ain't what's going on at a bar. See, when you go to a bar, you sit down. The music is very, very low. It's designed to be very low because they know the conversation is going to be going on. So they can't have the music up loud in a bar because then you can't hear each other talk in a bar. But in order to know that, you got to know the difference between a club and a bar. You trying to meet men in a certain income bracket, you can't get mad when they require certain things. You can't be average. They, they don't have to get average. They don't. All I'm saying is when I looked at that video, it's on my page, he was brutally honest. And a lot of times as women, we feel like we want to have pick and choose when we want. Um, and this, this is one of my pet peeves with women. And I'm a woman. You want people to pussyfoot around and sugarcoat shit to be able to deliver a message to you, they got to do it in a certain type of way because you're a woman. But as a woman, you feel like you can say what the fuck you want to say. How you want to say it, and people just got to receive it because you're a woman. But when the shoe on the other foot and another person talking to you in the same manner that you might have talked to them because you're a woman, you would say that they was disrespectful. You will say that they women bashing. You will say all of these things because they're saying things that you don't want to hear or they're saying things that make you uncomfortable. It's nothing wrong with dating men that are average. It's nothing wrong with that, especially if you got the bag. All this man was telling this woman was, ma'am, you got six figures, but you average. You just got your six figures within the last three years. Ma'am, you average. Ma'am, your education does not expand beyond high school. You're average. Ma'am, you have a baby daddy. You average. Ma'am, you got to put on makeup and shit in order to make yourself look like something. Ma'am, you average. A man that is bringing in six figures has options. And why would he choose average? Oh, I'm an exception because I got this to offer. Well, man, why the fuck they ain't beating your door down to get to you? When you dating, you have an obligation to bring your authentic self. See, if he would have asked me, Sharonda, Sharonda, you make six figures. You looking for a six-figure man. What can you bring to the table? Shit, I can bring some peace to the table. I can bring peace to the table. Why do you want to bring peace to the table? Because guess what? If I'm making six figures and he making six figures, what we both understand is a lot of times our day-to-day -day lives are stressful as fuck because we have so many things on our plate. So the last thing that we need when we're in a relationship is for somebody to be coming to us with petty shit. Bullshit. So I can bring peace to the table. I know a whole lot of men would love to come home and they woman is their peace. I'm, I'm going to let that, I'm going to let y'all sit in it. Sharonda, what can you bring to the table? I can bring some prayer to the table. I'm going to pray for you. When I'm praying for me, I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to ask God to cover you. I'm going to ask God to keep you. I'm going to ask God to instill his grace and mercy over you and your life and everything that you touch. A lot of men would love to have a woman that's going to pray for them. When this man, Mr. Kevin Samuel, asked this woman what she could bring to the table to a man that has six figures, this bitch said, I can plant a garden. <laughs> I swear to God. She said, I can plant a garden. And his response was, ma'am, 
Most of us go to grocery stores. We don't need a woman that can, he's a six-figure man and he's telling her, man, we, we go to the grocery store. We don't necessarily need a garden planted. If you say, Sharonda, what else can you bring to the table? I could bring a sense of reassurance to the table. Because if some shit fall off with you, because let me tell you something, when you're earning six figures, more than likely, your lifestyle is set up on some six-figure level shit. I could bring some reassurance to the table as if some shit go down with you, I got your back because I can afford to have your back. See, when you're dealing with people that got six figures, the conversation is different. The conversation ain't, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me what you could do for me. Can you buy me a bag? Can you buy me a weave? Can you buy me a this? Can you buy me a that? We can do that shit for ourselves. We don't need you to do that kind of shit for us. I had to play the video for my husband. Because I was just trying to see if I was tripping. And I knew I wasn't tripping. Because he didn't tell her anything that she didn't need to hear. He didn't tell her anything that she didn't need to hear. What can you bring to the table? I just said I could bring peace to the table. I could bring prayer to the table. I could, I could, um, I could have your back in a, in a, when a, when some shit go down. Yeah. I could bring understanding to the table. I could bring flexibility to the table because guess what? When you're dealing with somebody that's bringing in six figures, you got to be flexible as hell. Ask Spencer Parker. We both have to be very flexible with each other because at a, at a moment's notice, like I'm going to give you an example. Yesterday, I just sporadically say, okay, I know I'm supposed to be doing a photo shoot today and stuff, but I want to go do it in New Orleans. You got to be flexible to deal with certain type of people and understand that being that flexible means that certain things are, are going to work out for the greater good of the, the couple. You can't be on that talk, but I'm not about to drive all the way out there to know down New Orleans to take some pictures. That would have been a wrong answer for me. It just would, it would, it wasn't, it would not work for me. It wouldn't. What I'm trying to get you to understand is when you're dealing with people in a certain income bracket, they don't have time for bullshit. They don't have time to pacify you. If you couldn't handle him being direct with you and telling you the truth, baby, you ain't even ready for no man with six figures. See, let me tell you something. You got to be ready to deal with people who know how to talk and who, who know how to express themselves and say what the hell they want. Ma'am, you bringing in six figures. You just been bringing in for the last three years. You can't even express yourself and say what it is that you want, other than somebody that got money. You didn't. You didn't say nothing about their character. You didn't say nothing about they they prayer life. They uh, you know, on a spiritual level. You didn't say anything about that because you got an idea of because of what the media has told you that you should be going after. And you think that this is what you're supposed to be going after. But let me tell you, they got people out there that ain't bringing in six figures. But guess what? They very good people. And they can subscribe to your program. Because the thing is, when you're dating a man, you don't necessarily need to be worried about a man with money. Yeah, you need somebody to, to be able to, to, to match certain things that you got going on in your life. But at the end of the day, money is not everything. I was sitting, I, I was getting ready for work this morning. And I told my husband, I said, the one thing that people don't understand when they sliding in my inbox and sliding in my DM and they trying to come at me in these direct or indirect ways. The thing that they don't understand is I know that I got somebody with my best interest at heart. You have to find some, you have to allow, especially as a woman, you have to allow somebody to find you that got your best interest at heart. That's what you have to do. You have to allow somebody to find you that got your best interest at heart. A lot of times as women, we going out there and we trying to find men. 
We trying to find him. I'm going, find me a good man. That's the problem. You're going to always spend your wheels trying to find you a man. Men have to want you. I see women and they going above and beyond for men that don't want them. When a man wants you, he let it be known that he wants you. It's certain things that he do to let you know that he wants you. But if you always on the chase and always on the prowl, you ain't never giving him the opportunity. Like, men are hunters. But here we go with this 2020 shit. The women ain't got to sit around and wait on men to do this. And we could go there and get down and propose to them. And we could do all of this other shit. And you wonder why you stuck with a bitch ass man. Because you want to wear pants. And it may work for you because you want to have a certain level of control in your relationship. But I promise you, you ain't getting no six-figure man like that. You not. You not. Because he not interested in women who on the prowl. He not. He want to do the chasing. He want to do the hunting. I'm pretty sure if he make a six figures, he's very ambitious. Ambitious men are overachievers. Overachievers have points to prove to themselves. And they going to run up behind you. So, there you have it. You hearing it from Sharonda Parker. When you're dealing with men in a certain income bracket... You got to deal with them in a certain type of way. And they got to be the ones pursuing you. If it's the other way around and you pursuing them, suppose you pursue them. And suppose this six-figure man take you average upon your offer to be in a relationship with you. I promise you, you're going to forever be in mental turmoil because you know in the back of your mind that you average. And you know that you ran up behind him. And you know that if he wanted to, he could pick better than you. See, the thing is, he didn't want you. You wanted him. You have to get a man that wants you. That's the truth. Because if you want him and he don't necessarily want you, he's going to dog your ass out. He going to handle you however he want to handle you. He going to constantly let you know that you're replaceable. That's the shit that's going to go on. He got to want you. But that can't happen if you're running up behind him. Now, let me just see if I got any questions, concerns, or comments. All right, let me pull this up. You are correct, Casey. Bowling alley, poker game, traveling, jazz clubs, cigar bars. That's where they at. That's why when I did my meet and greet for my latest group, I ain't do my meet and greet at none of these local clubs around here. I did my meet and greet at Church Hill because I'm a married woman. But guess what? Just so happened if some of y'all single women that decide to come to the meet and greet meet somebody, I would like for you to meet somebody decent up in here. You got to hang out where they are. You, you, I, I've seen so many people who have met their partners while traveling, met their partners while on the, on the cruise, met their partners at a swingers club, met their partners you know, at the resort in Jamaica, the Hinduism and all this, because you got to go where they hang out at. You got to be open-minded for one and two. You can't call every goddamn thing gay because they like to take care of themselves and their appearance and they don't like to walk around with white knuckles and they like to put on some lotion. Nine times out of ten, these men that's earning six figures ain't, ain't picking up on too much, baby. They ain't, they ain't out there laboring. No, they got other people out there laboring. But you want somebody to come home dirty and all of this shit to prove a point. Well, baby, okay. Mm -hmm. What you got to understand is the type of caliber of man you're dealing with. Some of y'all ain't mentally ready for no six-figure man. When he asks you, when the, what, what's the last book you read? You're going to talk about probably some type of romantic novel or some type of urban novel. And all of this kind of stuff. But he might say, well, 
you know, you read Bag Man? And you gonna sit up there and say, well, what the hell is Bag Man? Oh, that's Rachel Maddow's um, new book. Bestseller right now. On the New York Times. And you like, what? Who is Rachel Maddow? Oh, you know, Joe got a new book coming out. Who is Joe? From the morning Joe show. Like, I'm just trying to let you know the conversation different, baby. The conversation different. Yeah. He ain't talking about where you can go get the new PlayStation from. Because he's not a gamer. His game is money. He ain't got time to sit in front of no television and play on no game. You get what I'm saying? Like, six-figure men doing different shit. And it ain't sitting, it ain't playing no game. When he talked to you and said, when, when, what's the last museum you went to? Sharonda, what's the last museum you went to? The Cotton Museum. In Memphis. What's the Cotton Museum about? Oh, the Cotton Museum about um, different types of cotton that was used, that, that was planted to use. It talk about the history of cotton, how you had people like stock, the same way they have stock brokers today. They were brokers that went there to sell the cottons according to the grades of the cotton. And it ain't that I'm saying that I'm all the way up here, but what I'm saying is when somebody's trying to have an intellectual conversation with you, can you follow when you want to date somebody that's six figures? Come on. But some people will be offended by this video and that's to be expected because what I have learned over a period of time is when you are being truthful to people, especially people down south, I don't know what it is about us, when you are being truthful, a lot of times we're not receptive to truth. We want to hit a fairy tale. So when you start dating people that's in a certain income bracket, you got to understand that you got to be able to follow and keep up, especially on the intellectual level. All right. That's going to wrap up my live for today. You all be blessed. I will be sharing this to the group. Mm -hmm. All right. Be blessed.